Sinadipati Bhutavikrama Kesari, the great veteran of Kajumbalar, was an old veteran, he has flourished in many battlefields. He had close friendship and relationship with the Chola clan. His brother, Kajumbalarj Sinivilar, had attained heroism in the Sri Lankan battlefield a few years earlier. The army that accompanied him also failed and had to turn back. He was very furious to clear the blame and re-establish the heroic glory of Kajumbalar. That is why he came there as the leader of the Sri Lankan army even though he was a little old. Didn't we see earlier about the disruptions caused by the looters who could not conduct the Sri Lankan war well? The long-standing rivalry and enmity between the two princely clans had now grown more. Therefore, Vandiyadevan, who was caught with the seal of Palyavur, would have had a difficult time with Padu Senadhapati Pariyavilar. Fortunately, he happened to report this to Aniruthap Brahmariyar. After learning the truth about Vandiyadeva from Alvar Kadayan, Anuradha sent him in a hurry to go to Sinadipati Bhutavikrama Kesari and tell him the truth. The army commander Bhutavikrama Kesari must have had a good impression of him as he looked up and down at the hero of the monkey clan. In a loving voice, he said, Brother! Have you been properly looked after here? Did you get proper accommodation and food? He asked. Yes Senadhapati. They took care of it without any shortage. Five or six servants were always waiting at the door to do the said thing, and there was plenty of room to stay. They sent a cat for dinner. When I was about to eat it, I got angry when I saw this heroic Vaishnava. He was born from the claw and ran away. He said. Senadhapati Oko. This child is a very funny boy. Thirumalai. Is what he says true? He asked. Senadipati. His ancestors were poets. Therefore, he also has a lot of imagination. Otherwise, what he says is true. Where I went to see him, a cat bit my arms and legs. All Workadians said. Seeing the bloody wounds on his body, General Bhutavikrama Kesari fell down laughing. A cat has made you this song. Good luck. You have this hero to guide you on the forest path. Senior. I don't need help. My staff is enough. I went to see him without taking it and I went to see him. Then be his helper. Before leaving, make sure he has a proper meal and then leave. Brother. Food facilities are a little less in Sri Lanka now. Mahinda's soldiers have breached the shores of all the lake ponds here. Therefore, agriculture is not going well. There are no people to do agriculture. The people of this country are starving. They are lying. How will our soldiers get food? We are not sending enough rice even from our own country. Senior. That is something I know. As the younger Brady passed through the old barracks, I heard the women appeal to him. Our husbands and children are starving in Ceylon. They complained that. Oko. They knew this and complained there too? Well, well. What did the younger brat reply to that? Sinadipati Pariyavila will not starve our soldiers as long as he is in Ceylon, he consoled you not to worry. Aha! Uh -huh. Did the youngest brat say that? There are so many royal clans in the world where so many famous maidens have been born. But there is no one equal to our youngest brat. There is a princess who can be next, commander. Who is that, brother? The princess of Kajumbalar is Vanatha Devi. Aha! Uh -huh. This child is very wicked. His imagination seems to enchant me. Brother! Have you seen our lamp in the old room? I see, sir. How can you not see the one who has not parted with the younger bratty? The two men came on the elephant to send him away from the doctor's house. Just as the light does not part with the lamp, the fragrance of the flower, and the shadow of the body, the goddess Vanati does not part with the younger Brady. Added. This child is very clever. Tyrumala. Give him the clothes and ornaments to take him to our treasure road. Sir. Let everything stay in the treasure for now, and I'll get it on my way back. Brother. About our lady of the house, about Vanati did the younger brat send me no message. Commander. 
I don't want to lie to them. Never lie to anyone, bro. Only in the case of this brave Vyashnavar, please grant exemption. Commander, if I tell him the truth, my head will explode. No, no. The younger brat won't send me any messages. Didn't message them. But. But, what? They have sent it to whomever they want to send it to. They have ordered him to tell the prince in person some news about Goddess Vanati. I have never seen such a clever child as you. Saying that, Senadhapati Pariya Velar Vandiyathevan hugged his chest. And then, well, no more idleness, depart. He said that. Sir. Must this valiant Vaishnava come with me? Shouldn't I go alone without him? What objection do you have to his coming? I have no objection. The knife inserted between me is a pure Virashiva knife. It has been asking for heroic Vaishnava blood for a long time. If it comes out in defiance of me, I see that this man will die in danger. Then leave that knife here and get another knife. You cannot find the prince unless Tirumala comes with you. No one knows where he is. And he also brings an important piece of straw to give to the prince. So it is better to go together in twos. Don't spoil the matter by quarreling with each other on the way. After saying this, Pariya Velar again called Vandiyadeva near him and told him secretly. Brother. He will not interfere with your business. But beware. Come and tell me what news he is telling the prince. At first Vandiyathevan had thought that they were sending Alvar Kadayan back to him alone. Now he felt alone. Vandiyathevan liked this situation very much. Vandiyadevan Alwarkadian and two other soldiers left that night. They started their journey and went eastward for two days. At first there were small villages. There was some crowd movement. It was becoming a forest area. First there was a key full of short trees. Then the huge trees that spanned the sky turned into dense forests. Interspersed lakes were visible. But their banks were crumbling in many places. The water ran away from all sides and the lakes dried up. Were left uncultivated in the fields. At one place there was still water in a large area. As the bank of Balavai River was cut, its water did not go with the river but scattered outside and it was seen that there was a water stagnation. Seeing all these scenes they went. All were Kadayan took it to Vandiyathevan and told about the devastation caused in that area due to the prolonged war. He often said how terrible war was. Both of them had a heated discussion about it. After two days the itinerary changed. Those who had gone east now turned south. The territories became denser. Plain terrain was replaced by rocks and small hills. Still in the distance great mountain ranges were visible with their peaks touching the sky. The appearance of the forest was terrifying. Some unknown strange sounds mixed with the sweet voices of the birds. There was talk of the dangers posed by wild beasts on such wild routes. All Workadian said that there are animals like foxes, leopards, bears and elephants in Akkad. Isn't it dangerous when foxes come in packs? Vandiyathevan asked. He remembered the nightmare he had had in the Kadampur mansion. The howling of a single fox is more dangerous than a pack of foxes, said Alvar Kadian. How so, my lord? In these forests, the fox and the leopard go hunting together. The leopard is lurking here and there. The fox runs around looking for prey. If it sees a human or an animal such as a deer, it will howl with a single voice. The leopard will immediately come running and kill it. The fox that works together with the leopard is called Ori. While they were talking like this, they heard the sound of the sea roaring in the distance. We've come a long way from the beach. What's that noise? Vandiyathevan asked. There must be a lake or pond somewhere on the side. It looks like a herd of elephants come to drink from it. All Workadians said. Oh. If we get caught in the herd of elephants. There is no fear of that. The elephants in the herd will do nothing to us. If we stand aside, they will go away without even looking back at us. Meanwhile one of the warriors who had accompanied them climbed a tree and looked around. Sir. Sir. 
A single elephant is coming. A religious elephant. Breaking trees and doing it. He shouted. Alas! What an embarrassment! How escape? All Workadian said in panic and looked around. You said you are not afraid of a herd of elephants. Why are you so afraid of a single elephant? Van Diathevan asked. Father! A single religious elephant is equal to a thousand ordinary elephants. No one can stand against its ferocity. Three of us have a shaft in our hands. You have a rod in your hand. A religious elephant cannot be resisted by a thousand tusks. That is a steep hill. If we climb it, we may escape. Run away. Saying this all Workadian ran towards the hill. Others followed. But after running for a short distance, they saw a deep steep valley in front of them. The valley was between where they stood and the hill a short distance away. They stopped at the edge of the valley. The elephant was fast approaching them. Its frenzy must have increased when it saw humans. He was surprised that the cosmic cataclysms did not explode at the sound of the religious elephant when he lifted up the hymn. Hearing that, the four men covered their ears. They scattered to one side of the head. The elephant came closer, it came closer and closer. It seemed to be coming towards where he stood, aiming for Alvarcadian. If you take it two steps further, the Alvarcadian will fall into the abyss. Running sideways is also not comfortable. The vines were thick, can you escape? Van the van took the job in hand. But it seemed to him that even the Vajrayuta of Indra could not stop the speed of that religion at that time. The overworked hand grew weak and tired. At that time, all Workadian's action made Van the van laugh on one side. Holding a stick in his hand, he shouted, Stop, stop, stop. If you come up, you're lost. I'll kill you and cover you up. Beware. All Workadian looked at Madhyana and shouted.